Sabrina was sitting on the river bench. She was sad and angry because Michael always had it better. He was the hottest guy in the company, he always had the best results, and he always had the hottest girls. This month, he had even become the employee of the month. Sabrina was on the edge of a crisis. Why in the world did everybody else have it all while she had nothing? Life was so unfair. A happy voice behind her startled her. Hey there, what are you doing there? She turned around and saw Sarah walking towards her. Ha, there is another perfect one coming. Sarah was her best friend, but she was always too pretty and too happy to be real. Sabrina often wondered how they could be friends, but she knew the answer. Sarah seemed to be the only one not being bothered by her bitter remarks. Well, I'm obviously holding a quantum physics conference to this occultured audience, can't you see? Sarah didn't seem to be bothered as always. Oh, sweetie, are you upset that you didn't get the prize? You know secretaries are not taken into account. If they were, I'm sure you'd be employee of the month every month. Sabrina was a secretary, the personal secretary of the company's boss. Yet another thing to remind her how much better others were than her. Yeah, I'm sure I could win the top trash of the year prize every year. Sarah shook her head motherly. Oh, sweetie, why can't you see your good sides? You're such a nice soul. I'm sure if you, you'd be happier if you could be yourself the way I see you. There you go. That happy good lucky attitude again. Sabrina decided to just let everything out. She knew Sarah wouldn't give up until she did, as much as she knew that Sarah could never possibly understand her. Nobody could. It's not about that, Sarah. It's about Michael. I'm sick and tired of his stupid face going around like, oh, I'm Mr. Perfect and I have a perfect little life with a perfect little people in my perfect little world. And now he got the price, he's going to be even more arrogant. Sarah sighed. Oh, sweetie, it's that bad? I think you really should try to get to know him and ask him out. <sighs> Sabrina knew it. Sarah was persuaded that she had a crush on Michael. She knew Sarah couldn't understand her frustration. I don't want to date him, Sarah. He's only an arrogant douche. I don't even know why you keep up that bullshit that I have a crush on him. I hate him. No, you don't, replied Sarah with a calm tone. And I think you have a crush on him because you keep not realizing that Roger is the one that always wins the prize, that Roger dates top models, whereas Michael barely even ever hangs out with anyone. Roger wins male beauty contests and he even appeared on a magazine cover as the hottest employee in the whole city. <sighs> sure, like someone like Michael could ever spend a night at home watching a movie with popcorn. I'm sure he's always out at the ultimate party hitting on some hot woman. A few days ago, I heard him brag about how easy it would be for him to, to hit on Jennifer Lopez and get her number. Sarah laughed. Oh, sweetie, that stuff was self-criticism. Michael is really witty. I don't think you know him as well as you think. Sarah couldn't understand and she didn't even believe her. Now she was treating her like a simpleton or like a liar. I don't lie, said Sabrina. Sarah looked surprised. I'm sure you don't, I'm just saying that you misunderstood what he meant. Sabrina didn't answer. If Sarah didn't want to believe her, it was fine. She knew what she had heard. Fine, I have to go now. Sabrina walked away without another word, leaving her friend there on the river bench. It was Monday morning. Sabrina had her coffee mug full of coffee in her hand. She was walking down the corridor to her, to her office when someone came, to, came the other way, running. She didn't even have the time to see who it was. The person hit her arm, spilling the coffee on her new white shirt and disappeared behind the corner. Great. Now I have no coffee and I will look dirty all day, as if I didn't have it bad enough. Sabrina reached her, reached her office, spilled the rest of the coffee out of the window and tried to clean her shirt with some tissues without any meaningful result. You should try with some water. Michael was leaning against the doorway with his hands in his pockets and a crooked smile on his too handsome face. Sabrina felt the anger grow within her. Why did he always have to be so perfect? I think you should try minding your own business, she answered sharp. Michael sighed. Well, I was only coming to ask you if you could tell Stephen that I'm going out for a sale. I won't be back until late in the afternoon. Sabrina turned up her nose. 
Of course he had come to boss her around. Sure, because I have nothing else to do other than obey your orders. Michael looked disappointed. Oh, never mind, I'll leave him a note on his desk. He turned around and walked away. That arrogant douche, thought Sabrina, as if, as if she was a servant or something. A few hours later, the phone rang. Sabrina snorted. She had had to stop three times in the middle of her work to answer the phone. She was used to do it, but it was annoying to her regardless. Hello, Stephen Byers' office. This is Sabrina. Hey, how can I help you? Hello, Miss Sabrina? Asked the voice on the other side of the phone. Yes. Well, Miss, this is Summer Hill Central Hospital. I'm Nurse Anna. One of your employees had a car crash. He's conscious, but he could have a severe cerebral commotion. He said to call the company to inform you. He gave us this number. If you could kindly help us reach the family, we would want to inform them. Wonderful. Now she had to go up to the hospital and check on whoever it was that and take flowers. That's what Mr. Byers wanted her to do in this kind of circumstance. I will be there in 30 minutes. Who is the victim? She had to write the name on a card. Oh, it's, uh, hang on, please. I have his driving license somewhere here. Oh, here it is. Thomas, Michael Thomas. Sabrina's heart stopped for a moment. Michael? She hung the phone without even saying a word, picked up, picked up her coat and walked quickly to the elevator. It was taking forever to the elevator to arrive. Sabrina was too worried to wait. She ran to the stairs and started running as quickly as she could with her plateau shoes. She was used to running one hour every morning. She was in good shape and Sarah kept telling her she had the hottest body. But she knew Sarah was lying. She didn't have any breasts and her butt was super tiny. She had to lean, a too lean body and she could barely find anything to wear that looked decent on her. She reached downstairs quickly. The elevator had just reached the third floor where her office was. Stupid thing, she hissed. She walked fast towards the door from which Sarah was entering. Hey, sweetie, where are you going? She didn't answer. She was still angry for their talk the day before. Plus, she had to hurry. She didn't want her boss to be angry at her for not being quick enough reaching his employee of the month at the hospital. Or at least, so she thought. Her mobile rang. She read the name while calling for a taxi. Stephen Byers, her boss. She answered quickly. Yes, sir? Sabrina, I just received a call from Summer Hill Central that Michael had a car, cra car crash. Why did you not take the call? Sabrina was furious. What the hell was that nurse thinking to lie to her boss like that? Well, sir, I did take the call and I'm calling the taxi to go to the florist and then to the hospital. I was going to inform you right after my visit as always. Good job, Sabrina. When you're there, please inform the hospital that I did some research. Michael Thomas lives alone. His parents died in a car crash when he was a child. He doesn't have siblings, so there is no family to inform. Sabrina was surprised. What about a wife or a girlfriend? Any friends? I could check with his co-workers. I'm sure the boss interrupted her. I already checked. He's very solitary. He doesn't hang out with anyone in the office. As far as I have seen, he remains in the office until late in the evening and he's back early in the morning. We are his only family, Sabrina. He snorted. Bring him some chocolates too. He's, this kind of guy is worth a ton of money to the company. He seems to leave to work. I wouldn't want him to change his mind. After that, he clo closed the call. Sabrina was feeling dizzy. A taxi stopped and she jumped in, mumbling the destination to the, to the driver. How could it be possible? No family, no friends, no wife and no girlfriend. That couldn't possibly be Michael, not the Michael she knew. The doubt that Sarah might be right about him surfaced, but she repressed it. Forty minutes later, she was at the hospital with flowers and chocolates as, as the boss had ordered. She was feeling oddly angry at her boss for his, for his lack of empathy. She didn't like the idea that Michael would feel appreciated when instead he was being manipulated into not getting a life if it ever was true that he didn't have a hidden one. She shrugged. She was sure he must have a life and when she would enter the room she would sure find a bunch of his friends and some hotties taking care of him and they will think she's a bum that cannot even wash her clothes. She felt angry. She walked up to the re reception. Sabrina Hay on behalf of Stephen Byers for Michael Thomas. The nurse checked on a computer, then sighed. Oh, 
Mr. Baez informed us that Mr. Thomas won't receive any visits from family members. We hoped he would, be, he would come personally, but I guess we, it will have to do. Great. Now she was being considered second choice, as if she, she were worth nothing. Room 15 on the first floor, said the nurse. Sabrina turned her back on the nurse and walked to the stairs. She had had enough of, her, of elevators for the day. The woman behind her mumbled, Bitch! Sabrina felt hurt, right, as if she had been the one being rude, she thought. Room 15 on the first floor was right in front of her. She took a deep breath. She was sure she would find people inside. The nurse must have lied. She heard the feminine laughs coming from within the room. Awesome, she thought. I'm being paid to look ridiculous in front of a bunch of strangers. She tried to calm down. She didn't want them to see on her face that she was feeling humiliated, especially not him. She walked in haughty. When she entered the room, she saw a bunch of people around the first bed and a curtain hiding a second person in the room. The douche doesn't even have the delicacy not to bother others, she thought, sure that Michael was in the first bed. Mr. Thomas, she asked to call the attention of that bunch of people to move away from the bed. She wanted to deliver her boss gifts and, and be out there, out of there. Here, called a voice from behind the curtain, she startled. A hot blondie on the first bed moved on the side, pushing her, her hair behind her shoulder. Oh, you must mean that guy that shares the room with dear Tommy. She pointed her finger towards the curtain. The guy laying in the, in the bed on which she was sitting looked nothing like Michael. Sabrina felt a stinging pain to her chest. She remembered when she was in the same situation as Michael. She felt angry. Well, thank you, ma'am. It would be very nice of you if you, could, if you could keep your voice lower, though. There's people in this hospital. It's not a pub, you know. She didn't wait for the answer and walked straight towards the second bed. Michael was laying there with an arm in a plaster cast and a bag of ice on his head that was falling on the side. He tried to pull it up as he could. Sabrina snorted. Damn, Michael, what the hell happened? She put the flowers and the chocolates on the nightstand and placed the ice on, on Michael's head. Michael smirked. A dock crossed the road, I tried to break not to hit it, and I ended up losing control. The next thing I know, I woke up in this place with tons of people running in every direction around me. A dog? She commented coldly. You risked your life for a stupid dog. Michael shrugged. I respect life, that's all. Sabrina passed her hand on her forehead. Those are from Mr. Byers. Give me the number of some of your friends so I can call them to check on you and pick you up when you'll be discharged. Michael's murked. Don't worry, I'll call a taxi. Sabrina snorted. What the hell are you talking about? What is it? You don't trust me? I'm not interested in bugging your friends if that's what you think. Michael turned up his nose. Very well. It's not like I had much of a chance with you anyway. You'll just think I'm a loser. Sabrina stared at him. What the hell are you even talking about? Michael sighed. Well, I don't have any friends. Well, except from my childhood friend back at home in the south. Do cats count? Because I have one. I work all day and I go home late in the evening. I don't have much time to socialize. Sabrina was shocked. He must be trying to fool her. Well, if you don't want to tell me, at least tell the nurses they will call for you. Sabrina turned around to walk out. Michael tried to pull himself up. Sabrina heard him complain and turned around. What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to follow you. Pfft, you cannot even stand on your feet. And why would you want to follow me anyway? Because it's my best chance with you and I don't want to waste it. Sabrina was shocked and confused. Excuse me, your best what? You must have hit your head pretty hard. Michael frowned. Look, you and I are more similar than you think. I bugged your friend for months asking information about you. You have a broad net of acquaintances but only one or two close friends you hang out with because nobody understands you. I have a wide circle of acquaintances I don't want to bug me. I know how it feels when, when everyone else is just too stupid to get you. It's fucking isolating and painful. I know how you feel and I don't mind if you're bitter or cold most of the time. I know you're hurting and I want to heal your wounds. Sabrina let herself fall on a chair next to the bed and hid her face in her hands. She couldn't believe it. She had waited all her life to hear those words from someone. 
to be safe from her misery. Michael continued talking. You're special, Sabrina. I look at you from across the corridor when I have to wait for Steven. You work hard. You're precise. You always do everything it takes. You're never late and never early. You may not be the most outgoing of all people, but that's not your fault. It's only that nobody can see how special you are. She kept her face hidden. She didn't want him to see her tears rolling on her cheeks. She turned to the other side, cleaning her face and picked a little mirror from her purse to check her face. Everything was fine. She stood up, picked, the, picked one of her personal business cards from her purse and gave it to him. Call me when you're discharged. I'll pick you up and take you home. You can't go alone. Michael smiled. See you tomorrow then, beautiful. She raised a brow and walked out. When she reached the door, she quickly walked back. She pointed her finger towards the flowers and chocolate. Don't trust him. He's a jerk. He's trying to manipulate you into thinking you matter to him. He's, he only cares for money. Then she walked out again, feeling satisfied for warning him against her boss and feeling accepted for the first time. This won't work, she thought, to silence her secret enthusiasm. But deep down, she hoped it would.